Hello, and welcome to... Oh man, I screwed that up. Welcome to Drawing with David. I'm going to draw stuff and uh, just sort of ramble on and on about what I'm doing when I'm drawing. And today we're going to draw spaceships. And they're not for Star Sector, they're for just whatever. And they're going to look a bit like this. And this is me reshooting the intro because... We don't need this anymore, do we? Because um, I didn't like it the first time. But I've explained pretty much everything in the upcoming video, so I will just let that happen. Cool. Alright. <clears throat> Took a little break. Now, let's uh, get back into it. Okay. So, I'm drawing spaceships. They're going to be cool. And they're, you know, vaguely inspired by uh, Master of Orion 1 designs. I really enjoy the Mass Run 1 sprites because they uh, they have a sort of like weird energy to them that's, I mean, not like energy energy. The artistic direction's a bit wacky, but Mass Run 2 is a little more serious. You know what? Let's pull up uh, some examples. Okay, so here's the green set from Mass Run 2. It's very like high contrast, like, it's a bit noisy, honestly. I don't, I don't think the design of like one chip from the other really stands out nicely. I mean, you know, I, I love Master Ryan too, although these guys, it's, it's, it's too much noise, too much visual noise. Like, if you compare that to, for example, Master Ryan 1, although it's like a wackier game, and you'd be like, oh no, the Master Ryan 2 sprites are better. But, lo but look at these guys, They're, it's more clear that each ship has like a distinct design and intent and composition, and I think it's really cool. And, yeah, so this was my starting place. I want to make, I mean, okay, take the shark here. This is like my big green ship here. I want to make sure it's uh, quite a bit different, and I've done some interpretation in the uh, details already. But, yeah, I'm going to take it away from here, but that's my starting place. Right. Let's, uh, let's actually draw something, shall we? Okay, now where do I start? Um... Oh, I did explain about concept sketches, right? All right, took the painted concept sketches, brought, brought them back here, and resized them so that we'd have a large, sorry, a huge ship. Huge, there. Two large ships, two medium ships, two small, and one little tiny fighter for bonus. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, let's get started. Now, I'm not going to start with a big, big ship, because that takes bloody forever. I'd rather start with something a little smaller to sort of uh, get the style down. And so starting pretty small is, I've found to be a pretty good way to do it. Maybe? Oh, I like, see, I like the engine in this guy. He's got some cool engines. Um, which one do we start on? Maybe this swept wing, like, thingy. Cool. Okay. Let's, let's start there. So I've done a lot of the work already on like uh, defining composition, uh, suggesting details. Although you know it's very like if you look at that on the pixel level, it's pretty messy. So it's going to need some work. Let's pull up our hideous magenta underlayer. Like okay, we're going to make some uh, make some nice wings here. So I'm going to start by blocking out the large scale. Oh man, I should organize these stupid layers. Okay, let's do the, the boring stuff. Okay, so that's that. Yeah. This will be the green um, sketches. Cool. So, we know which layer is which. So I'm just going to start drawing. Okay, I'm pulling up the pen tool and I'm going to do these uh, rounded sort of aerodynamic shapes. Now that's sort of the distinctive feature of these uh, green ships. Like they've got just um, sort of lots of curves and uh, an aerodynamic feel, and very pointy and so on, like as opposed to the, the round masses of the red ships. I'm going to turn that magenta off for a sec, it's really awful. And these sort of, I don't know what you'd call this, they've got like a you know strong line and cross-section parts, and there's, there's a suggestion of uh, sort of wing shapes, but they're all like a hard angle, no curves, except for that. Okay, very few curves. Right, so the green ships are all about curves. So, 
we're gonna have to do some work with that. And it's one of the, I mean, as a pixel art thing, like curves, you're like, no way, I don't want to do that. But we don't have to uh, draw each pixel, and that's sort of, you know, uh, as I've worked on Star Sector in particular, I've gotten away from doing like old school pixel art style, and I'm pretty happy of how the, you know, the uh, style has uh, grown over the years and advanced or whatever. I mean, you know, not to rag on people doing old school pixel art because that's some awesome stuff. But I yeah, just like doing my own thing here. Okay, enough rambling about that. Let's draw this wing. So I'm just using the pen tool. Um, poorly, it seems. There we go. <clears throat> I'm not going to follow the, uh, you know, sketch exactly. I'm going to do this first part. There we go. Actually, what I've done with the wings here is a little bit like the, uh, and the, uh, stealth fighter and, you know, RL, the Nighthawk. It has these, like, little pens on it. They're weird, like, shape. I just pulled a picture of it, but I don't have one ready. Doesn't matter. So I'm just gonna... While I'm drawing, I'll just ramble like crazy, because um, I guess that's what one does. Okay, that's a nice wing. Um, okay, I'm going to save that for now, and I'm going to do some of these uh, little other parts. So that I have those. Okay. That. I didn't take my selected color, did it? Okay, let's change that. Pull up the entire shape there, and now we have a little overlay. Down. Um, you know what? I'm gonna keep going with uh, finding these shapes, and before I uh, turn them all like into raster images. Okay. This shape, straight line. It's a little curved. Okay. So you can see here we've got. New shapes to find. No, I'll leave it at that. I'm being a little more precise than I need to be, I feel. <clears throat> okay. View, great. Looks wonderful. Let's just flatten all that to a. There. Right. Oh, I should change the color on that one first. Oops. Okay. So, uh, so now I'm using the, uh, what do you call that? Square lasso thing. Another excellent tool for making shapes, although not as good for making rounded shapes, but not all those shapes are rounded. And what you can really do is, uh, it's kind of fake. I mean, we're on the pixel level, so you don't have to make like a really well curved shape to make it look like a curved shape. You can just sort of wing it. <laughs> it's amazing how like sloppy you can get with uh, these selection radicals. But then like, okay, what I'm doing here, I'm pulling colors from the other half of the ship. As my reference. And then I've got the selection reticle, so it's sort of masked out an area that now I can apply like a sort of airbrush effect to, to do shading. But you get these hard geometric, extremely hard geometric edges. You know what? I screwed up. I forgot to turn on anti-aliasing. All right, let's redo that. Let's let's start this little engine up here. I'm feeling kind of dumb about doing that. Okay. Not really nice though, is it? Whatever. And again, we don't have to like stick really closely to uh, the sketch, but just it's a starting place, you know. Okay. Look at that. Great. And so I'm constantly sampling, holding down Alt to sample a color over here, and then just going in with an airbrush. My uh, left hand is on the keyboard, so you can see the opacity up here, just by hitting like numbers up here, I can change that. So I'm constantly changing that to uh, do different levels of airbrush effect. And uh, that works pretty well. You know what, we can even freehand lasso, like even for doing hard shapes. I mean, yeah, you'd think this would be a terrible idea, but you know, look at that. It's like, is that a rectangle? Kinda, but it works. And no one can really tell the difference. So, like once, cause, you know, we're working at such a fine grain. Okay. There we go. Do more of that. <clears throat> How do we do the interior part? I don't even know why I bothered making that green shape. Whatever. It's all good. There are uh, no mistakes, only half the accents or something. I 
don't know what this is trying to be. It's like this sort of an indented part. But maybe it should just be like a... Like a paneling of some kind. Like armor plating that's not painted or something like that. We'll do that. A slightly different color. Great. <clears throat> okay, now I get these little struts coming down. Look at that. Look at that beautiful <laughs> mask work. I mean, I should note, I'm being sarcastic there. It's a, it's a little sloppy, but again, you don't really notice at the scale, and if there's ever a problem, you know, I can just fix it. Like, it's not a pro not a big deal. Sure, we need a little more definition in this top edge. I'm also learning how to do the style of the uh, green shifts here, because I'm really not sure. So now, here, we can pull back the screen, look at how it's turning up, turning up, turning out, and, uh, you know, pretty good. I usually have, I have two monitors here on my setup, and uh, on my left monitor I will generally have a copy of the file at 100% resolution, so I can just glance over and see how it's coming along. For the purpose of recording, I, uh, well, I'm not going to do that, so you can see what I see, more or less. Okay, let's keep going. Let's get this little doodad shape in there. That's kind of cool. And again, you don't have to be very precise. No big deal. Look, looks wonderful. And the, uh, this, my own sloppiness will take care of the uh, anti-aliasing. And we have anti-alias on, of course. Otherwise, you're asking for trouble. Okay, let's get a bit more shading in this entire area. <clears throat> Again, pulling colors using the uh, keyboard to control opacity. Let's just real quick. Don't have to get caught up in details. I mean, we are, but there we go. Look at that. Shading's pretty good. I mean, you know, we can even just go over the burn tool here. Whoop. You don't want to go too heavy with that, because it actually alters the hue of the uh, colors. So, but, but I like a little bit of that. Like, if everything is the same hue across a, uh, grade, a gradient, then it looks a little flat and boring. So, doing a little burn, doing a little dodge, I, I tend to wait for the last, like, polish stage of uh, spreading to start going in with those. Okay, so here's an interesting place. Uh, there's sort of like an angled plate here, and I want to distinguish this section from here. Make sure I'm not there. Oh yeah, I can hold down Alt to subtract from a uh, selection. So, well, we'll get into that in a second. No, what the heck, I will... So if I selected this, and then it's like, whoops, I put this weird part on, I could, you know, go in, delete that, or like hone the shape here if I wanted to. So it's actually very powerful. Okay, <clears throat> let's shade this guy. There, get a nice smooth gradient. Sort of do what I feel. Again, selecting colors, pulling back in. A little white on the highlight. Okay, I deselected my plate here because I got distracted. Let's get back in there. And there we go. So I want to offset this plate from the rest of it. So just go like that and bring in some white. Because I've got white here, I'm going at very low opacity, just going over a bunch of layers. It will alter the hue, it makes it less uh, saturated, and it distinguishes this plate from this plate, even if they happen to reach the same value somehow. And here I've pulled some of this uh, slightly uh, more yellowish green in here as well. So, there we go. Now it looks distinctly like, eh, it could be a little more distinct, but you get the idea. It's sort of got a nice like seam here and it's sort of it, it's implied strongly by the shading it does not like a line here you don't need a line that's what's so great about it here I have a line which <laughs> I'm actually gonna lighten that up so if we take this and one thing we do here if I want to go in with like this green if I go on top of that it's gonna diminish that highlight all I want to do is lighten up that dark patch so if I go to lighten I'm in light mode it will only draw on pixels that are darker than this color. So there, I could, well that's a little heavy-handed, but go a little lighter. So it's a little lighter at the top. And it's nice to bring some of the colors from surrounding parts into uh, the shading, because, um, I mean, you know, in real life you'll get 
some uh, light will hit this green plate, and then you'll get like a bit of green in here, even if it's not necessarily green normally. And you know, we don't have to simulate lighting with the painting exactly. It can be a pretty fast in loops, but it just if you give a hint of it, people will well they won't pick it up. It'll be very uh, what do you call it? Subliminal? Is that right? Yeah. It'll just look right. And that's what matters. Okay, so here we got some plates going on. I don't know, it's looking pretty sharp. I mean, I'm not, oh, I have not yet done a lot of pixel details, but let me let me get into a little bit of that too. Um, let's do the engine. How about that? Because that'll that'll get some like actual like sort of old school pixel art feeling stuff. Now let's pull this magenta back up so we can see the side or the edges. Okay, this engine. Um, here, I'm going to pull the sketch directly into the working layer. Okay, now I'm just going to turn it. Yeah, I'll leave it up, but <laughs> we know it's there. Okay, first, let's fix the shading on this thing. <clears throat> Get the airbrush, there we go. Let's make a nice gradient. So we just have tall raised part there, lower part here, just as implied by the shading. Um, so there are other things here, like talking about the light reflecting off the surface. Like there's a much higher surface here. I almost tried to point it out with my finger, which is, <laughs> you can't see that obviously, so I gotta use this brush. Um, so where this edge meets, like light is blocked by this raised portion. So you know, we can give it a little shadow. Even though this is flat, Giving a bit of shadow makes it look, it sort of acknowledges this raised por portion next to it. So that it's a little more natural. See, there we go. That looks pretty good. I mean, I'll definitely clean it up some more at some point. But. Okay, now we're going into pixel brush. Um, what was I going to do with the pixel brush? I don't know. It's got, I don't want it just to be like a flat shape. So let, let's add a little fun to this. Some greebles, yeah. Like, I'm not fully against greebles. I don't know, people got the wrong pressure for that blood, which I think. But, you know, whenever you say something on the internet, like, someone's like, oh my god, this is the only thing with no... the only thing you believe with no, like, moderation. I shouldn't, like, complain unnecessarily about that. The reaction is very light, and uh, I didn't actually piss anyone off. Okay, we're just adding little greebly shapes here. Um, I can just do this in my sleep, like... <laughs> just from sheer practice. And uh, well, one important point I should make though is that I'm not doing like hard outlines ever pretty much because uh, it's not really the style. Um, it, you can do that in a sprite but it looks really clunky. And, like I don't even know if one should you know aim to do that in general because I mean, like the hard black outline. Like, you know, if I was drawing this spaceship, like, here, let me, here, let me turn off, turn off that wretched magenta, and I'll take the black too. Like, if I, was, I was doing stuff like this. I was like, oh, okay, here's my spaceship, and like, here's like some part of it, and uh, I can fill in like. There we go. Oh yeah. It's like it's just kind of uh, crude. And, I don't know. I don't love it. So like, y you can. People could see there's a difference between like this, the surface here, the green plate, and whatever this white thing is, just like due to the contrast between the two colors. You don't need a line to distinguish it. Like a line can like you know help enhance it, especially if it's very like light shaded. Because then now we're in, you know we're implying about you know which part is taller, which or higher, and which is uh, lower, and doing some cool stuff. But I mean that's just rendering theory. Okay, whatever. Let's move on. Um, Got your spaceship. Cool. Um, let's resolve the engine, because that's what I said I was going to do when we got into this mess. Right, and it's for a pixel. So I've got my uh, two pixel brush here. One pixel, I mean, a big part of this is just don't want to sweat the details too much. I mean, when people get into pixel art, it's all about sweat the details. But it's, I don't know. I, 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 over the years, I've been working on a style where I don't have to worry too much about every single pixel. I mean, sure, one pixel can be very important, especially in like high detail areas. Let me give an example. Uh, like these ships, like these little windows and little vents and things, 
placing those exactly correctly is kind of a big deal, but most of the ship is not like that. Oh, and these little highlights, like that's important for like rendering. But you know, you only pay a ton of attention and get really finicky with parts of the ship that require it. You don't have to sweat the big picture too much. Okay, let's get this engine going. Um, we can see here there's some alpha behind there. Let's fill that in. Uh, now, with the green ships, I want to suggest like these big rocket nozzles, like a you know big Saturn rocket or whatever uh, Elon is getting up to nowadays. So, I'm just pulling. Oh, okay, we can do this talk too. <clears throat> Note these uh, shades of gray here. Um, if I go into this. Notice it's quite greenish actually, and uh, this mid-tone gray is a lot warmer, almost yellow, and the you know upper end of that is even uh, more toward yellow. So you can see the hue changes throughout the uh, gradient of colors I'm using. If it was just a flat gray like like over on this side with no color at all, like I uh, just it would look really boring. I I really recommend you don't do that. And also I. Another reason why I like doing this, the painterly sketch beforehand, is I don't have to worry about like coming up with a, a color scale gradient thing. Like I don't have to worry about it. I already did it, and I did it, you know, using pretty loose brushes and uh, being a little intentional about using slightly cooler colors for the uh, shadowy parts versus uh, lighter for the. Anyway, you get the idea, maybe, and maybe I'll probably, I'll probably maybe whatever talk about it later as well. Okay. So now we're going to really get some highlights in here to define whatever this engine thing looks like. And you know, it's kind of like the Greebling process, just like rings of different heights and have little uh, indents and make sure it doesn't run too hard in there. Um, oh, what does this look like? Here we go. Oh, another thing I should mention is I'm only doing half the sprite because I'm just going to mirror everything because I'm lazy. No, no, I think it's important to work hard, but you, you know, it's about not expending effort. You don't have to spend, but we can do the doubling process right now. This ship actually appears to have a one pixel center line, which a little awkward because I don't want to actually do that. So I will just make it slightly wider. You'll get like a two pixel center line at some point. So here we go. <clears throat> We have now mirrored it, so now we get a little better impression of what our engine's looking like. Oh, it's pretty good. It looks like a straight cylinder. I want to give it a bit of rounding, so here I go back in with the lasso. And, you know, being quick about it. There we go, get some shading in there. And one thing we do, we can lock the layer, and now we can shade just without doing a mask, because the layer itself would be the mask. And see how that works. Here, I can even pull in a little... Oops, there we go. A little color burn. That little color dodge. And one thing I'm doing here, so we have the center line. Like, one thing I almost always do is make the sides of the center line different. Even if I'm otherwise mirroring the ship. Like, I make one part a little brighter, because then you get that pinpoint, right? Like, for example, that pixel's really light. And if it was these two pixels, it'd look a little flatter. You wouldn't have that like really sharp point. It looks pretty good. Um, so here's the question: Do you think this is too bright? Maybe I want to make the engines a little duller and burned looking. But here's a, here's what some, here's what we can do. Let's go in. Let's find a color that's like no, we don't want orange. And I'm going to be very light with this touch. So we want to make it a little burned looking. Let's uh, just get a multiply. Your opacity is 10%, and we're locked layer, and I've got selection, so whatever. There, now it's getting a little redder, especially in the darks. Mm. Okay, nice and toasty. Not that toasty. Let's look at that again. There we go. So it looks like a slightly, like the metal looks a little different. Maybe it's like uh, the heat does something to it. I don't know. It doesn't have to be like hard science or anything. You know, the eye will pick up on this very subtle difference, and still multiply, and it'll be like, oh, okay, that looks like something a little different. You know, it's part of the engine. It's hot down there. I don't know. 
anyway, I'm just, I mean, and here I am making little stories from detail. It's like, uh, I watched a lot of Bob Ross when I was a kid, and like, that guy was very influential somehow. I was like, oh man, I want to draw like trees and stuff. And, uh, well, now I do. Except when I draw fish, which I also do. Which is great. Okay. What was that point with Bob Ross there? I don't even remember. Whatever. Man, my mouth's getting real dry. Mm, hang on. <clears throat> Great. <clears throat> um. Yeah, we got some engines. How about that? Looks pretty good. Uh, well, you know, let's finish the center line of the ship. Uh, I'm just gonna like really go in with this. Uh, just here, I'm just using a brush. That's kind of. <laughs> You know, just give it a little definition. Okay, now here I'm going to do some masking. I kind of like this cool shape here, but I want to connect it to this area of brightness. That nice rounded part. Get our airbrush, turn texture off of that. Now, someday I should talk about all the brush settings that I like, but that will be another day. There, now we pull up the stark white to do a really nice highlight. And, okay, so here's something you can do. I've got this mask, and I kind of want to shade around it, so I can go select, inverse. Now, I can pull like a nice black or one of these greener, like a dark greenish gray, and then do a little uh, shading around it. There we go. Cool. Yeah, see that's looking okay, although that, that's a little too sharp right there, so I'll pull that back. And again, so I've got my one pixel brush, but I'm, I'm using the keyboard to control opacity, so it's a bit like painting. And, uh, yeah, let's get some little pixel details in here. I think people like those. There we go. What are all these little parts and bits and bobs? I have no idea. I'm just drawing them. Yeah, I just draw here, man. Okay. Let's fill in whatever that is. Um, this could be a little, give a little more definition. I don't know. Like, is this like an air intake? I don't know. They're in space. That's kind of dumb, but maybe they shoot missiles out of it. <clears throat> it's not my problem. Okay, let's shade that a little better. Like, got this weird hard line. I can make it a little smoother. There we go. Um, let's get the front of the ship. That's important. Let's see, what do I want to do here? I mean, it's pretty clear what the concept is. I'll just select it so I can just put this plating down. And we're moving a little close to black here. I mean, no, it's just dark gray. All right. But I want to retain this nice gradient. Make it a little darker. Here. <clears throat> okay, yeah, that's a little better there. Light at the top. I don't know about this little like porthole thing, whatever it is. But we get pretty dark inside of it. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do like an overlay layer for like lit up loop. Ugh. I can talk. Hang on. I'm not used to talking this much. Like I don't talk when drawing. You don't mix these. <clears throat> right, back to this little window thing. Um, right, I was thinking about doing like a bright color overlay so you can have glowing windows, but uh, I don't know if I will. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. But I can do it later. I don't have to worry about it. No problem. Okay, let's find that little edge there. Uh, no, it's too dark. It's too much. It's a little large. I'm trying to keep the window style unique on all these ships, although these little slots are a lot like the red slots here. Uh, maybe I'll just want red. Like, okay, so the blue ships have like a lot of little uh, sub-windows. So that sort of defines what they do. But these green ones, well, maybe I'll just stay with the slot-style windows. Because, like, you got like some menacing sort of eye-looking things. It looks kind of like a, uh, you know, an old medieval German helmet. Like a, what are they called? A salé. That's a French word. But whatever. Looks cool. Um, let's get back to this. Let's do the top bit here, and my cat's bothering me. Hi, kitty. Got something to say? Yeah. Okay. She's just standing in front of me and getting in the way. That's okay. It's cute. Let's do this. Yeah. Oh, cat, don't mess up the mic. All right. <laughs> Let's add some details in here. 
Hmm. Um. I don't know. I'm just making little pixel you do. Just to give it a little texture. The cat's like eyeing me. He's like, why, why do you love me? Okay, alright, here, cat, you gotta go away. It's not working out. It's all good though. Okay, bye, kitty. Okay, here we go. Um, do I like this? I don't even know if I like this front part, but if it's not working out right now, I can come back to it. Whatever. Here, I'm doing some gradient with the good old pixel brush. Just doing it a little differently. Okay, I think it's time. So you see, okay, here I've sort of drawn over the sketch. So I might as well pull that into the image. So I've got selected, copy, paste. Oops, a little misaligned. Um, there. Now it's back under. Flatten that shape out. There. So now I'm working directly with these pixels. Um, how are we doing with this ship? Um, it's not quite got the level of detail I want yet, so let's 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 finish it up. Well, <laughs> it might not be finished, finished, but we'll get it most of the way there. And then if I don't like it later, I can revisit parts of it, and I probably will because you know I'm pretty perfectionist about this. Okay, let's let's do a little more greebling. So here I've just got like a three pixel brush. I'm just going to low um, opacity. Just putting some little details in, taking them out, you know, just spread this around. It makes it look sort of like plating. But here, it's very subtle, though. But sort of a, an effect. And look, you can take other colors and sort of add them in, and it'll look like little uh, plates that have been welded on or something. And if you look at it and it's really small, it's very subtle. But it works. It's just a suggestion of detail without having to, like, you know, draw harsh lines around it and all that business. But you can go very light. It's kind of nice. And my cat's back. Okay, kid, it's time to go. <clears throat> um, hmm. How am I feeling about this? Let's let's uh, let's chop this ship in half again, and do the mirror trick. It's not really a trick. It's just... Okay, okay. mirror. There's probably a hotkey for this, which I don't know. And someone's screaming at me. Let's find out. So, yeah, we've got a pretty cool ship here. I mean, it's not like a hundred percent there. Like, okay, let's do some overall shading. I think we're looking pretty good. I want to unify things. Like the composition or whatever. So, this wing, I think it needs like a little more consistent shading. I turned my, I've locked the layer so I'm not drawing off of the sprite. And now I can do a little lightness there. There we go. Lighten up here. A little in there. <clears throat> yeah, pretty good. Let's pull some of this there. Look, I'm just going over with an airbrush. It's actually quite, uh, uh, what do you call it? Large scale? Like, you don't have to be super careful if you're at, like, low opacity. You're just sort of giving some suggestions of shading. Now, here, I'm going to do something crazy. I've got, so, color dodge. Highlights. Exposure is 10%, so, you know, it's really settled. Now, we just want to bring up the the tops of the wings and like the center line of the ship a bit. Oops. And like the front. So, gotta focus on that. There we go. So, well, that was a little little much. Let's pull back on that color dodge. Just a little bit. <clears throat> and, you know, I'll, I'll emphasize the center line a little more. I can get kind of crazy there. Um, I'm not totally happy with this area. Let me give it some more texture. Um, oh, here's a trick. How about this? So, you know, I want some like cool cables and stuff. Like, I don't know, maybe they're doing like, weird repairs or it's just how they roll. So I'm just making these little snakes out of the selection tool. And uh, there we go. It, you know, it doesn't look like anything right now. But what I do here is I take an airbrush, I get a color that really contrasts with everything. So let's get a nice, uh, like, so the ship is kind of greenish. Let's get a nice, like, um, how about yellow? Yeah. And now I'm just going in here. Go pretty strong. And there. Now I've got some, like, sort of gold cable looking things streaming around. It's a little, here, I'll pull back a little bit. That. You don't want to go too harsh with them. And then we can do the old invert selection tool. Get our 
if you shade around it a little bit, just a tiny amount. I mean, these are a little haphazard. It makes the ship look janky. But if you want a janky ship, like that's the way to do it. There we go. So now it looks like there's some like little cables strewn about. Cool. And uh, do we need any more little touch-ups? Um, this edge looks a little bright, so I'm going to get in there. Start, oops, not color dodge. Color burn is what we want. There we go. And it does make the uh, color a little richer, so you got to be aware of what you're doing with this tool. Okay, yeah. Down there. Engine up. It's just in that apartment. And, and we're just about... Well, I wouldn't call it done, but I'd call it, you know, a pretty good start. So yeah, I think I'm going to leave it today at that. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Um, spaceships are fun. Yep. Alright, just kidding. Uh, here's one last little view of the ship. I worked on it a little more without uh, talking to myself, and I feel it's uh, come along a little better. Of note... Um, I took off the little uh, front slot window uh, thingies and uh, did some weird like sensor array. So it looks kind of like a, I don't know, maybe it's blind or use different you know, non-visual means to navigate. And uh, I resolved a lot of this area more because I didn't really like how they connected, you know, he, the uh, wings connect to the main body of the ship. And uh, the edges of the, bleh, the ends of the wings got some uh, sort of little panel-y things that sort of are suggestive of feathers or something. So you definitely have a bird motif going on here. Also uh, changed up the sort of engine side parts a little more because I didn't like how boxy it felt. Because the green ships have to be about not being a box. So that's why that's modified. And otherwise just uh, sort of did an overall shading pass to uh, unify the composition more. So, there we go. And now I'm done talking. For real. <laughs>